Hey, good Friday afternoon, everybody, or good Friday evening, maybe Saturday morning for some of you, because we're getting this done way late. We just, I, I left a, did a Facebook Live um, post earlier this morning. Dad and I had to go to Phoenix this morning, so that's the reason this is running way late. It's still Friday, but um, it's probably going to be late by the time many of you see this, or it may be tomorrow, or whatever, but... Um, Anyway, a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, our LTS uh, live training session is going to be February 27th. It's a Saturday. Um, probably same time as we did last month, which is 8 a.m. Arizona time, 8 to 9. Uh, and we got some uh, a, a good subject planned for that. So um, don't miss that. Uh, the other thing was... Um, Oh yeah, what was what was we had a couple other things. Oh yeah, um, the other day on a coffee and questions. In case you guys haven't caught that, uh, again uh, the sharpening now is seven dollars per bit, and then seven dollars uh, per order to ship them back to you. So go back to coffee and questions a couple days ago, and you'll see that. Um, the other thing was except for premium members. Yeah, except for premium members, of course. If you're a premium member, then it's free. Just uh, $7 shipping to ship them back to you. Um, and that's unlimited, however many bits you've got, as long as there are bits. Um, the other thing was, uh, oh yeah, the DWP611 routers are on sale right now at Lowe's for like 99 bucks. And somebody also, I haven't confirmed this, but somebody also said that they're also on sale, uh, that you can get them on Amazon for 99 bucks. So you might check that out. Um, anyways, great router is my favorite router. If you're looking to get a little Palm router, it's, uh, it's terrific. Tell them um, if they want a link, uh, send me an email. I'll send them a link to the Amazon link. Okay. If you want a link, send dad a link. And he'll send you the Amazon link to that router. Send me an email. Send Yes, send out an email. That's what I said. You said send me a link. That's what I said. I said <laughs> link, not email. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. So here's what I'm going to do today, guys. I'm going to carve this sign. So this is one that it's not real special, but um, actually it is special for the lady I'm doing it for because it's in remembrance of uh, um, her, her late husband, who is Will Earl, and their son, um, and it's, so it's kind of a gift for the son for, uh, for their, his, uh, his shed, uh, as kind of a, uh, remembrance to the father. Uh, and they were Chevy guys, obviously. So I'm going to, it's been a while since I've carved a sign complete on film. So I figured this one has a little, that little special logo on there. So I'm going to do this thing, uh, start to finish on film, but we're not going to do, uh, real time I'm going to do every aspect of it on film right up to the finishing but it'll be in segments so I'll start with the pro with the edging get that all done then we'll get into the profiling so let's uh let's get after it let's get this thing going all right man you on me you got things going over there so first thing I'm going to do is um Kind of make my make sure my my base is going to slide well. So I use the the silicone spray. Again, this this video is um, for you old timers that have been with us for a while. Um, we haven't done this for a while, but for you new people, uh, which we got a lot of new subscribers, I thought this might be just kind of a refresher in case you hadn't seen me carve for a while. You old timers and you new timers have, maybe haven't seen the carve at all. So, anyway, I'll just take you through, just run through my normal process when I'm making a sign. Sometimes I have these, uh, the edges on these signs done up ahead of time, but sometimes I, I don't. Just depends. So, let me clamp down the edge of the board there. So what I've got here, guys, in case you didn't notice, I've got this sitting on a board that we made because this, this cedar that we use is really thin. So if I was to put a Jeep chamfer on the front of this, uh, the bearing would drop down below the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on that board 
over the edge so that when I run this router around that bearing won't be hitting the pad. Here we go. You said that for a different depth on the back? Uh, yeah, a lighter. You can see I went deeper on the surface on the front than I did on the back. I don't, I'm hoping that you can get that, Dad. So uh, turn, that, turn it this way. Yeah, let me, let way. me zoom in on that. So it's deeper here than it is on the back. Okay. And you can see this board, I puttied it up a little bit because there was a couple knots. I sanded off the surface and laid it out, but there was a couple knots. So I'll be sanding all that off when I do the back of the sign after it's all done. So now I'm done with that router. I'm going to move that out of the way. Now I'm going to drill my holes. And again, I'm just kind of going through props, you guys. Uh, the process that I go through when I make a sign. So this is 24 inches long. I know I want my holes on 12 inch centers. So that's 6 and 18. I'm going to drill top and bottom. So you come in 6 inches from the end and six that way inches, you know it's on 12 inch yeah, centers. 6 inches from this way and 6 from this way because it's 24. So this would be at the 18 mark. And now I know that I've got 12 inch centers. I've got 12 inches in between those. Yep. I may be, I'm thank you for slowing me down, Dad. I may be doing it a little bit fast. Well, that's all right. I've done uh, a few of them. So now I just drill, drill those holes top and bottom. And like and that I, hole is for the screw eyes? This is for the screw eyes, yes. For hanging after the sign That's number done. 10 screw eye fits that hole? Yes, correct. Well, they don't go by numbers anymore. They used to, but they don't go by numbers much anymore but yeah a small screw eye so now I don't need that anymore now I'm going to carve right on here I'll get my profile bit up here so this is my router with my profile bit in there and I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack with this cord do is that good or do you want me to move that? no that's all right I zoomed right in on it I okay. showed the profile bit okay good Alright, so I need to do the same thing with my silicone on this base. This is the DWP611 router with our base plate on it. Most of you probably already know that, but just in case there's somebody brand new. Yeah, if they went down to buy that DWP611, they wouldn't get that base. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look quite like that, this. It doesn't come with that base. So now I'm going to set my depth at eyeball of uh, actually I'm gonna do this logo first I always try and do the the difficult stuff first now on this logo even though that has got the the black inside are you on here Dan? yes even though it's got the black inside here I'm not really gonna do that I'm gonna make this whole Chevy logo an outset letter basically like a D um, or yeah so it's not gonna I'm not gonna carve this inside black. I think it'll look better if this whole Chevy logo is wood. This will all be background and that Chevy logo will all be completely outset. That's my plan here. So how deep did you go? How deep? Uh, I'm probably about an eighth of an inch, something mm -hmm. like that. All right.
So, got a real nice picture of that cord. Oh shoot, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> That's all right. Dad no, there was, there was enough on there they could see what you were doing. Dad, gum it. All right, I'll turn it around then. Um, let's see. Gosh, I completely forgot about that. Uh, let me see. Let me. Yeah, when you get ready to do the sign, as far as the letters, uh, if it were turned around the other way, it'd be. I think this. That'd be a little bit better, probably. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, what I, the reason I stopped the router, I'm glad I did now, is now I'm going to set down a little bit deeper, guys. I'm going to go somewhere around a quarter of an inch, something like that, and I'm going to go ahead and make those lines deeper so that I don't have to, it gives me a little bit of a, what I call a, a buffer zone when I go back with my background uh, bit, my 90 degree, so I won't uh, have a chance to hit those, uh, those uh, edges. Yeah, that's a lot clearer. Yeah, I bet it is. Outset letter. Same depth? Same depth, yeah. Woo! A lot of static electricity today.
I'll show you guys something that you probably haven't showed before. When the static electricity is going out here in Arizona, I don't know if you can see that, Dad. No, I'll... Yeah. That's, that's what happens to my, <laughs> to my uh, lenses when the static electricity is uh, going out here in Arizona. How did, you can see it's just, it's going away and it's, whew, it's coming right back. You know, we might get some anesthetic spray. Oh, I, I have, actually, the way to solve this is I'm going to go, as soon as we shut the camera off, go get it. Uh, Anti-static uh, dryer sheets. Right. I have a dryer sheet that I'll wipe across here and then that will greatly diminish that so if you, you guys, want me to go get that no I, I mean I'm I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the rest of this up off of camera now so I'm gonna go get a, a dryer sheet and wipe this thing off and uh, then it will uh, will help a lot so if you guys are also live in a place where the static electricity in the spring and the summer is high uh, dryer sheets work out really well What's the matter? Oh, I got black on my... Yeah, I didn't, yeah. didn't uh, brush the sign off. Yeah, well, actually I did, but oh. yeah, anyway. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to finish the rest of this uh, profiling off. Now, another thing that I wanted to do is I've got the other, my other router. This is the Porter Cable. This has not got near as many signs on it. I've probably done... I don't know, maybe a thousand signs with this. I don't even know. But uh, to give you an idea of what it, what I think, I hope I'm not wrong here, but this is what it sounds like with bearings going bad. Well, when I'm in a cut, you heard what it sounded like. And this is, this is more of a fresh router. A lot quieter. Yeah, a lot quieter. Yeah, and the thing about this too, as I was going to say, is I can feel it when I'm doing the profiling like that, that it wants to drift on me. I can feel the actual router want to drift away because of the router bearings starting to chatter. I can actually feel it in the router. Um, and it, it makes a difference. You really have to watch it with, uh, with that router. I'm going to have to replace that thing here pretty quick. So, uh, all right, we're going to shut down now, guys, and we'll come back in a few minutes. I'm going to finish the rest of this up off camera on the profiling, and then I'll come back and do the inset letters and the backgrounds. So you guys will see that stuff. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. So um, I talked about the dryer sheet for the static electricity, and I don't know how much the camera would have seen before, but the, the static electricity was just sucking this sawdust right up to these lenses. So what I do is just have, I've had these dryer sheets in this uh, Ziploc bag for like a year, year and a half, and all I do literally is I just take it, and I don't wipe it on there real hard, but just enough to transfer some of that chemical over there and uh, it makes a huge huge difference so if any of you guys are dealing with uh, um, face masks or magnifiers yeah, yeah or glasses or whatever where you have that uh, static electricity sticking to that stuff all right so uh, let it's now I'm gonna do these inset letters clear up my cord here that should work I think. <laughs> oh, I need to turn the cord around too. Uh, so let me get my depth set. So my depth on this, guys, will be, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch. Again, you guys, anybody that's been around and watched me for any length of time know I go more by the, the width of the line than the depth of the cut. Let's, let's see how this works. Actually, you got a little better view when you turn the other way, huh? Really? Yeah. Better view this way? Yeah. Okay. 
That way the cord's out of the way too. Well, it's out of my way. It's not in your way? No. Okay. Yeah, better for me. This is, yeah, they can hear you better than they can me. What bit is it? 60 degree, right? It's 60, yeah. Yeah, that's a 60 for doing the small inset letters. I'll leave the camera still if you move the board a little each time. Huh. Pretty cold, it's a little much, but that's Those are one inch inset letters, right? One inch inset, correct. Okay guys, I can finish the rest of these letters off, uh, off camera. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, get my background bit here and uh, and get some background done so that was a 60 degree V groove the three fluted 60 degree V groove and this one is the 90 degree V groove and this is for the background and that's a Black & Decker 100 router that they don't make anymore, right? No, this is actually a porter cable. Is that a porter this, cable? This is the porter oh. cable, but you're right in the fact that they don't make it anymore. This is the porter cable um, model, what is it, 1001? Is that, uh, I think that's a 1001 model, uh, if I remember right. Yeah, 1001. All right. Yeah, that's fine, sir. Now they can see why you went around and <clears throat> made that line deeper and wider. Yeah, on your cleanup. It's made yeah, it so easier. You didn't have to get so close. Right. That's exactly right. No, that's all right. I'll follow you.
Okay guys, that gives you an idea of what we got going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll shut the camera down. I'm going to finish up this background just like I did here. Finish up these letters. I'll come back. When I come back, we'll spray it, sand it off, see what she looks like. We'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, we're back. So the sign's all carved. I got it all carved. Now what I need hold, to do... Hold it, hold it there. Let me, let me pan in on it. Give them a good look at it. Now what I need to do is I need to go through here and take out some high spots to make sure these things don't, uh, don't come up as white spots when we go to sand it. And again, you old timers have been through this, you know what I'm talking about. But for you new people... That doesn't show up real well on camera, but yeah, it, uh, they can see what you're doing. You anyway. can see this little spot right here inside the A that's actually uh, black. Uh, if I don't take that off, then what happens is when I go to sand it, that'll end up being a white spot in there. Not that that is terrible, but then I'd have to... Uh, touch it up with a sharpie and I want to try to avoid that as much as I can. So I'm going to try and go through here and take out any high spots that I see. Being careful not to nick the edge of any of my letters or or my little... Logo. And what is that tool that you have? This is just a little hand carving tool we've had like for I don't know. 30 years. 20, 30 years, something like that. So once I think I've got all the high spots, now I'll take my stiff bristle brush and I will brush that thing really well to try and get all of that, anything that's loose in there, I want to get that loose. I want to get that out of there. So I'm going to brush this down in several different directions. to get all of that those chips loose now I can see there's a spot in here where one's still hanging on so I'll go through and inspect it again see if I missed any high spots looks pretty decent looks like I got pretty much everything out of there so now put on my glove and we will spray that thing black there it is that ink or primer this is actually the primer this oh. is uh, the rust-oleum primer okay. could have used the ink or the primer either one and I'm, this really is not where I normally spray my black but I'm gonna, I'll just fake it here. Normally I would be outdoors doing this with a little bit more ventilation, but we do have the doors open, so it's not too bad. So now, let's see if I can turn this correctly. We just want to get nice don't want to overspray this again guys you know that's my kind of my thing oh this thing is try not to spray my back wall and my signs back there if I can help it it's leaking all over my I guess I should put a glove on my other hand too oh well so now I'll just spray from a different angle and that's just about done I'm going to let that sit. We'll come back and we'll sand this off, see what it looks like. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're going to sand this thing off. So I used two different grit of belts. Like, again, you old timers know, but in case you don't, uh, in case you're new, this is a 40 grit uh, belt, 3 by 18, and then the uh, my finish sand will be an 80. Uh, and this is, a, this is how I clean my belts. This is a little belt cleaner. So I always do that before I start sanding. So let's sand off the back here.
Okay, so I always sand cross grain on the back side. A couple different reasons. It takes it off much faster. The back side doesn't need to be smooth like the front. And it gives, for me, I like it because it gives a bigger contrast between the front and the back of the sign. Makes this, the front of the sign look that much smoother. All right, now we'll do with the grain on the front. Okay, so I didn't take off all of the ink, just about 90% of it, maybe 95% of it. Now I'll finish it up with the with the 80 grit, and we'll clean that belt first. Now we'll hit the rest of this. This is one of the reasons, guys, that I really like using the small sanding uh, sanders. This little area right here is, is, was kind of a, a low spot. And it was kind of, I turned it around, but I think I'll turn it back around. And I need to sand a little bit more to smooth that out. But I, with the belt sander, I can do that. The other reason is that the um, this board, I'll hold it up and you can see it's got a little bit of a cup to it, but it's got a little bit of a, man, my finger, um, I, don't, I may be able to see that it's got a little bit of a cup. Can you see how it has kind of a... Yeah, you can a, see it a, just a little bit there. A little bit yeah. there. Not as much now because I just sanded some of it out. but. Um, that's the reason I, I like the little belt sanders because I can follow that contour. So let's blow this thing off and see how it came out. Let me turn it around here. Looks good one back here, son. Oops, I just got dust all over it again. So that's how it came out. And I said we were going to put a finish on it, so I guess I better go get a can of finish and throw a coat of spray on this. So <coughs> I forgot to get that before we started this scene. So we'll be right back and I'll go uh, get a can of finish and we'll put a finish on this. Be right back. Okay guys, so this is what I use almost all the time for my finish. Uh, three or four coats depending on how much it it soaks into the board. So I always do the back first Turn it over now I'll go all the way around the four sides ah. There it's spraying better if you get a can, by the way guys, that doesn't seem to be spraying when it comes down close to the end of the can, just turn the nozzle a little bit and try it again. A lot of times that will do it, like it just did. Turn the can upside down and clear the nozzle, and that's what she looks like. Looks great, son. 
Thank you, dude. So that, uh, this sign, uh, in case you guys are wondering, this is my standard $40 sign, but I charge an extra $15 for the Chevy logo, so it's a $55 sign, basically. Not too bad. I probably, what, half hour total in it, you know, maybe 45 minutes with everything. Not too bad. But I think they'll be happy with it. Okay, so that is it. We are done for this evening. Heck, it's dark outside already. So, um, hope that was helpful, to, especially to you new people that maybe haven't seen that before, all the processes that I go through when I make a sign. Um, there's a lot more to it. Um, and, you know, you we've got, gosh, 300-something videos now. So, go back and watch the videos. If you have any questions, obviously... Uh, hit us up. My email will be here down below. You can email us, call us. Any questions you have that we can help with, um, just let us know. We'd be happy to help. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and Questions. Have a great one. Bye-bye.